Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine material graph. Today we're going to be looking a little bit deeper into distance fields, particularly the distance field gradient node. So let's jump in to our little sesh. We've got a Charlie ball. We're going to create a new material. I'm going to plop that on. We're going to open up this bad boy. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the distance field gradient node. And let's just plug that into the base color. Now you'll see straight away that nothing is really showing up. Uh, kind of looks like a bit of a useless node, but that's just because the data that this is receiving, I guess, is just very, very low or close to zero. So there are a few ways that we can get this information to a more useful level. The first is to normalize it. So normalized means that it's R, G, and B values will add to one at all times, unless it is very close to zero, in which case it will output zero. So what that looks like is that the sphere is blue when it is in the positive Z direction of this cube. And then over here, it's gonna turn green. Very good. And if we were to put it over here, it would be red. Now, if we went over to here, it would appear black. Same with here and same with underneath the cube. The reason it's appearing black is because it's using negative values. Now, another way that we can get usable information out of this node, and this is my preferred method for some things, I guess, is to just multiply it by 100 and then clamp negative one to one. So basically, that's just going to like increase the intensity of it without actually normalizing it which can be useful in some cases. So you can see here, it's basically doing the exact same thing, but the sort of crossover points are a lot smoother as well as the edge here. So if I was to look at this normalized instead, then you can see that the edges are super, super hard, I guess. So by using this rather than normalize, we can tell if something is both above and to the side of something rather than being half above and half to the side, if that makes sense. So what can we actually do with this information? Well, we could combine this with the distance to nearest surface node. You could say distance to nearest surface divided by, let's go 200. So when we're 200 units away, we want to start doing the thing. Um, we will saturate that and also one minus it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm doing here, you can watch the first video on distance fields. I'm guessing you've probably already watched it if you're looking at this one. So if we plug this in, you'll see that we now get this white mask. So what we can do with this is we can multiply this black and white mask by, you know, a big value or any value that we want. Let's just say 100 for now. And then multiply the result by the direction of the nearest distance field. So let's put this into the world position offset. And what this is going to say is when you start to get close to a distance field, deform in the direction of that distance field. So for example, you can see that as I move to this corner, it kind of deforms around this, this thing because it's saying, okay, down here, deform that way, up here, deform that way at the corner, because I'm using this normalize rather than the multiply. Um, deform you know diagonally basically let's say we were doing something funky like making this object glow really brightly when it comes near you know a, a surface of some sort so let's make it glow red at 100 luminosity so what we're seeing here is when we put this sphere close to a distance field it's going to glow super super brightly um, but using the distance field gradient we can say to it only glow when you are in a certain direction of this cube. So this is somewhere where I would just multiply this and clamp it so that we get an unnormalized vector. And then we can mask this in the B channel. And then what we would do is multiply this mask by this, I guess it's like an exclusion that we've set up. Okay, so now that we've done that, you'll see that nothing has changed yet until we put this down on the side so you can see it isn't glowing super brightly when it's down at the side only when it's at the top and that's because in here we're masking the b channel which goes from 
negative one to one and it's zero at the side. And we're basically saying only do this thing when we're close to the surface and when we're in a positive B value for the distance field gradient. If we wanted it to do this when both above and below this cube, we could use an absolute node after the B channel mask. And that's gonna make all of the negatives positive, but keep the positives positive. So now you can see when we're below it, it's glowing. When we're to the side, it's not glowing. When we're above it, it's glowing. So that's one way that you can use distance field gradient. You can use it to mask out specific directions for your distance field effects. So the last little thing I'm gonna show you is something that I use in my river material so that things that have a distance field along a certain direction of the object are affected differently to the, you know, the sides and stuff like that. You can see here in this snippet, the water rises behind the object and the water dips in front of the object in the direction of the river flow. So what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna keep the setup that we have currently, but we're gonna use the red channel instead. So you can see now that we've changed this to be the red direction or the X direction instead of the Z, B up and down direction. We're getting our, you know, glowing bright effect, but it's in the world's positive X direction. We want it in the object X direction. So you can imagine, you know, this might be a, a, a river or something that's flowing in a particular direction and we want things to only, you know, affect in the drag. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the distance field gradient and we're going to transform it from world space to local space, maybe? Yes. Okay. So you can see when I rotate this cube, the direction from an object with distance fields is getting masked in the object's X direction, if that makes sense. Kind of hard to explain. I know I'm doing an absolutely shit job of explaining this, but I hope this kind of speaks for itself. So you can imagine if this was a big river or something, and we wanted to create ripples only in the direction that the river was flowing, this is how we would do it. And this is how I have done it. And we can kind of, you know, adjust the, uh, the cone of it by doing an, an offset value after this multiply. So that way we can kind of isolate a certain area now, if instead we were using normalize, we might get better results. So you can see here, I can kind of, yeah, isolate it anywhere along this, this bit. Now, if I do turn this around, if something has, you know, sharp geometry like this, you can see that this gets thinner. So, you know, it's wider here, it's thinner here. Whereas if we weren't using normalize and instead we were just, you know, getting a bigger value and clamping it, it kind of maintains its size, even if the direction's a little bit funky. So that's something to consider. I guess just try both methods, see what works for you. And so that's kind of how I achieved that effect of the, the rivers, you know, creating foam behind, you know, objects in the water and that kind of stuff. So I hope that that kind of helped you a little bit understand what this node is and how it's used and what it can be used for. It is very very finicky and it will take a lot of experimentation and you know just kind of visualizing it through using base color and visualizing what all the masks are doing in order to be able to use it i guess effectively but the option to use it is there and it can be a very powerful tool when you know used in the right way now if you're interested in a few more little use cases for this node i do have a tutorial about my falling sand shader which you can find here, in which we use distance fields and distance field gradient, you know, direction stuff in order to kind of stick uh, like a, a flat plane to any object so that we can have sand fall down, you know, and it conforms to the object and that kind of thing. It's pretty cool. I, I advise checking it out. Um, and if you're also interested in seeing a bit more of my river shader stuff, there's a video on that here in which I kind of showcase how we do the the ripples, you know, downstream and that kind of stuff. But other than that, I think we're going to call it there. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it educational and or entertaining, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. 
And if you have a question about this tutorial or any tutorial or anything about Unreal Engine or game dev in general, feel free to join our Discord. There's a bunch of helpful people there and they will answer all of your questions. If you'd like to go one step further in supporting the channel and the tutorials, you can look at our Patreon, which is linked in the description below. So I guess with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.